Welcome to Alka and Bria Show. Thank you for always tuning in. Thank you for always coming back to listen, learn, learn and grow because that is what it's all about. It's all about the growth. And we want you to succeed in life. And so we want to always give you the, the most valuable information as possible. Today, my amazing co-host, Ria, is going to be taking over the conversation. And before I do bring her on, I just want to introduce myself, Alka Sharma, and I am so grateful that you can be here with us. And my name is Ria, and welcome to our show. Exactly. Welcome to our We're show. We're going to talk about the investors for capital gains and cash flow. We already talked about investors only for capital gains the previous week, and we also talked about the investors only for cash flow um, last week. So today, we're going to talk about the investors for both capital gains and cash flow. So I have about 14 lessons that I learned from reading the book of Robert Kiyosaki. And first lesson is that the old economy on a me, which is the old capitalism. There are investors, they're called old time stock investors. And this investors, they invested for both the capital gains and the cash flow. So that was what the old st old time stock investors were doing. And these investors, they talked about the price of the stock going up and they also paid the investors dividends. So when the stocks goes up, that is what is called capital gains. And when they paid investors dividends, that is what is called cash flow. Second lesson, the new capitalism. So most paper investors, they look for quick buck to make a killing. Third lesson the big investment house they are hiring the smartest. Whisked, who is just is out of college, and this big investment house, they use the power of the super computers, the technology, the AI, and computer models to look for the slightest, slightest market patterns. This big investment 
firms that they can exploit. All they need to do is the college, graduate, and the technology, the supercomputers. Fourth lesson, an example of the computer. They pick up a 1% differential in, for example, the tech stocks. Okay, just an example in the tech stocks. So this investment house, this big investment firm, they will bet millions of dollars, millions of dollars hoping to gain one percent on millions of dollars in just a few hours. So Robert says, this is very high leverage and it's very risky. Fourth lesson, these computer models also cost a lot of volatility in the market. And often they cause crashes. Now, fifth lesson. When the stock market announces that their program trading has been stopped or halted. What they are talking about the computer, they're talking about the computer programs being halted. Sixth lesson, the market crash The market would crash if the computers, just draw a computer, if the computers would say sell. Now, the market would boom and crash if the computers say buy. So in other words, the prices can go up or it can go down. Or no, or no. Fundamental 
or business reason at all. Seventh lesson, a stock price may have no relationship to the value of the company. Because these computers and artificial supply or demand. Eighth lesson, if we remember the dot-com secrets, the dot-com era, the companies that were not compared, but rather they just got good idea. And these companies were valued at billions of dollars. And these companies that were really valuable had their share prices trashed or it went down. And this was the dot com boom bust. So even if the value of the company was great, the stock prices, so the value, there was no correlation of the value of the company and the stock price. Ninth lesson. Lesson old-time investor according to Robert in this new era of capitalism so Robert must be smart enough to invest for capital gains, cash flow, you have leverage of debt, and you also have the tax advantages. Tenth, for example, Robert he bought a stock even though he does not have 
control because the company which is an old industrial age company they historically pay steady 11% dividend. Dividend is the cash flow again. Okay, so that's the cash flow. So Robert would be getting cash flow from that stock. Now, when the share price drop in the market crash, he bought the stock because the price of the cash flow came cheaper. So if there's a crash, you can buy stocks at a cheaper price. 12. So when Robert occasionally would buy paper assets. So paper assets are stocks. Okay, let's put that stocks. Then he would buy for cash flow. This is again your dividend. Thirteenth lesson. Being a little guy and not having the control of the company, remember we do not own the stock, Robert, he does not use leverage. It is all 100% of his money. So that's lesson number 13. Lesson number 14, Robert only invests with cash. He can afford to lose if Robert is wrong so money gone it's okay with him because that's his extra and he uses cash because with the stocks it's up and down so if this particular stock it goes up in price Robert, Robert may sell because Robert likes investing for cash flow. And capital gains. So cash flow again is the dividend. If you're looking at it from the stock, capital gains is when the stock price is higher than when you bought it. Fifteenth lesson. Robert's ROI 
or return features. Return of investment goes up if and when he can receive both cash flow and the capital gains. gains. We're going to talk about investors for both capital gains and cash flow. Now, I have 15 lessons that I would like to share with you today. First, in the old economy, the old capitalism, old-time stock investors, they invested for, for both the cash flow and the capital gains. And these investors, they talk about the price of the stock going up so when the price goes up then you have capital gains if you sell it and it also paid investors dividends and that's what we call cash flow second new capitalism so most paper investors paper is the stocks they look for a quick buck to make a killing the big investment house or firm are hiring the smartest whiz kid out of college and they use this supercomputers and computer models to look for the slightest market pattern they can exploit fourth an example of a computer they pick up a one percent differential for example in tech stock these investment firms or houses they will bet millions of dollars, hoping to gain that 1% on millions of dollars in just a few hours. So, for example, they buy a hundred million. Okay, that's hundred million. One percent of that is one. One percent of a hundred million is one. So that means it's 100, it's 1 million. So imagine just doing that. If you have 100 million and you get the 1% differential, then you have that 1 million in just a matter of few hours. And if you repeat it in several hours again, then this 1 million, they compound, they add up. Now, Robert says, they think this is very high leverage and very risky. Fourth lesson, these computer models also cause a lot of volatility in the market. And often they cause crashes. Fifth lesson, when the stock market announces that the program trading has been halted, it's talking about this computer, the computer's the computer programs being halted. Sixth lesson. So if the computers, computer models would say sell, the market would crash. Now, if they say buy, then the market would boom and crash. In other words, the prices can go up and it can also go down for no fundamental or business reason at all. A stock price may have no relationship to the value of the company. So you may have a great value, the value is there, but then the price may not be high enough. Why? Because the computers created an artificial supply and demand. Eighth lesson, <coughs> excuse me. In the dot com era, <laughs> companies that were not compared, <laughs> but rather just got good idea, and they they only got good idea, but they were valued billions of dollars. And the companies that were really valuable had their share prices trash. 
So this was what happened in the dot-com boom bust. The value was not comparable to the price. You may have high value, but the price is trashed. Ninth lesson. As an old-time investor, according to Robert, in this new era of capitalism, Robert must be smart enough to invest in capital gains, cash flow, leverage of debt, and tax advantages. Now, if you remember, if we have real estate, real estate, if you sell it right, has capital gains. Real estate also has cash flow on your rental income. Real estate uses leverage from the bank, 8 to 22 percent, and, and real estate has tax advantages. Now, for example, Robert bought a stock even though he does not have control. But because the company, the old industrial age company, historically can play, pay a steady 11% dividend. Now the dividend is the cash flow. And when this company, the share price drops, the market would crash. Then what happens, Robert would buy the stock because the price now of the stock is way cheaper. And so the cash flow, there's cash flow. And then the price of the stock is way cheaper. Twelfth lesson. So when Robert occasionally would buy paper asset, paper again is stock, he would buy for cash flow dividend. Thirteenth lesson. According to Robert, being a little guy and not having the control of the company, Robert cannot use leverage. Lever Robert does not use leverage. So Robert only invests with cash. Cash that he can afford to lose if Robert is wrong. Fifteenth lesson. If this particular stock goes up in price, that means that Robert may consider it to sell because Robert likes to invest for capital gains. The stock price went up and he already received the dividend, the cash flow. Robert's ROI, which means return of investment, goes up if when he can receive both cash flow and capital gains. So your ROI, your return of investment, would go up if you have capital gains and your cash flow. So those are the lessons that I learned from today's topic, investing for capital gains and for cash flow. Stay tuned for more Alka. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, you said uh, Robert, he invests with cash. What is the advantage when you invest with cash? Like you said, he doesn't want to go wrong, right? So what is the main advantage that one would invest with cash? So like Robert says, the stock, the stocks is very volatile. And yeah. if, for example, you use your um, home equity line of credit, right? Let's say you bought a house and you use that home equity line of credit, you're borrowing, okay? You're borrowing that money. And for example, so he that stock, yeah. yes, yeah. you use that money to buy the stock. Now, if that yeah. stock goes down, now you just lost the money and you still owe that line of credit in your in your property that you just pulled out. So what he is saying is that if he has extra money, he would mm. only use cash. He would not borrow debt. Because if you go to the bank and let's say, hey, Mr. Banker, can you lend me 100000 of your money so that I can invest this 100000 to your bank, let's say Bank of America, the banker would not lend you money. Why? Because yeah. they know it's risky. So that's right. why if Robert do invest in stocks, he only uses cash. Cash means extra money, not right. cash for a rainy, rainy day. Cash extra sitting in his in his uh, bank account. Cash that's not doing anything. 
and he looks for stocks that can do one, pay dividend, a high dividend. Dividend is cash flow. Second, that can uh, the stock price would go up. And if the stock price would go up, that is capital gain. So Robert likes both capital gain and cash flow if he does invest in stocks. Exactly. Well, that's that's a good point for people to know. Um, only if you have surplus money, then it would make more sense. If if it has surplus money, then if you want to make an uh, you know investment in stock, then you know you're fine because you've got surplus money. That if you do lose, you know, for any eventuality, then it doesn't matter. It's not painful, right? Um. So, yeah, I mean, those are things to think about. And, guys, you know what? As we said, always do your due diligence because, uh, you know, we are only sharing information. I'm only sharing information what I, what we have learned, okay? But at the end of the day, you know, if you want to invest in stocks, you've got to do your due diligence. Where is the current market at? What are the stocks that you are investing in? Do a lot of research about those stocks because, you know, you don't want to lose money. And right now, if you're not in a position, you have surplus cash, then you don't want to make, you know, really stupid mistakes. Because I know I've been there, I have got burnt. But, you know, it's through that process that when you do get burnt from people, that you learn. And I always like to say, you know, if you fail, you uh, you make mistakes, you do it once. But if you repeatedly keep on making those mistakes two, three times over, that is when you're not wise. That's when you don't have, like we said, financial IQ. You've got to have you've got to be you've got to have the knowledge. So with that being said, yes, um, yeah. we have to remember that Robert says this big investment firms, right? This big investment houses. Number mm. one, they hire a college grad kid, a whiz kid. And two, they use computers, computer software, computer programs, right? This computer software, these computer programs, they create an artificial supply and demand. So even if the value of a company is great, their price the stock price could go down. There is no relationship to the value and the mm -hmm. stock price. So that's why it's very volatile. So, you know, we have to be very conservative. Well, I'm I'm more of a conservative and that's why I invest in real estate because number one, I know it provides me with cash flow. Mm -hmm. Number mm -hmm. two, with time, right? There's only finite amounts of land in this world. I know and uh, when I have time, the value of the real estate goes up. So that's capital gain. Third, leverage. When I go to the bank and I say, hey, Mr. Banker, I want to buy $100,000 worth of property. The bank would say, come on in, Ria. He will give me 80% loan to value. I will mm -hmm. provide 20%. So not all 100% of the money is coming from me. So that's right. third. There's leverage. Fourth is tax advantages. Why? Because we're so, we're solving the community's problem. So we are getting the tax advantages that the government is providing to all people who are solving the community's problem. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, 100%. So guys, you know, I hope that you got a tons of value from uh, today's show. Uh, we will, as always, what do I always say? is knowledge is power but knowledge without the implementation of what you've learned well then you've not really learned much so it's always in the implication the application of what you are learning every single time even what i tell you when it comes to mindset i mean do we always implement what we learn okay so Make sure that you do take advantage every time what information you are learning so that it's registering and you go ahead and apply. 